So you've been asked to attend hospital for a test that's known as an echocardiogram, also known as an echo, and you're wondering what this is. In this case, you've come to the right place because in this video, I'll cover all of the key things that I think you need to know about it. Now, an echocardiogram, or what I'll refer to as an echo, is a test that checks the structure and the function of your heart using sound waves called ultrasound to create moving images. It can help diagnose heart problems such as damaged heart muscles or valve issues, as well as look at the chambers of your heart and monitor your heart over time. It can also help to diagnose heart issues that you might have been born with. These are called congenital heart issues, or they can look for infections or fluid around the heart and also assess if your heart isn't pumping as strongly as it once might have. Now, there are several different types of echocardiograms, and we're going to cover three of the more common ones here. So the most common type is something called a transthoracic echocardiogram. Now with this type of echo, the ultrasound probe is moved over your chest to take heart pictures. The next is called a transesophageal echo. With this, a probe is passed down your throat to get a clearer image of the heart. The third type is something called a stress echocardiogram. This checks heart function under stress, which is done either through exercise, so for example being on a treadmill, walking, or giving you a certain medication. Now, whilst all of these are slightly different, they're all similar in that they will be carried out by a trained professional. Depending on the type of echo that you have, you might lie down, or you might be asked to exercise on the treadmill. Normally, you're able to go home on the same day as the test, but if you've had a stress echocardiogram with medication, you might be asked to rest for at least a few hours after the test so that the medical team can monitor you. In terms of preparation for your echocardiogram, you can usually eat, drink, and take your medications as normal, unless specifically stated otherwise. Now, the general exception to this is for a stress echo when you might need to stop certain medications, as well as avoid eating for a few hours before the test. But again, you'll receive specific instructions from the hospital who are carrying out the test beforehand. And remember, if you're not sure about anything or you want to clarify anything, you can always call up the hospital to clarify any questions or points of ambiguity before going to the test. Now, typically an echocardiogram lasts between 30 to 45 minutes, but again will vary on person to person. In terms of getting your results, your doctor or the sonographer, who is the person who's carrying out the test, might discuss the results with you immediately, but it's usually more likely that they'll send them to the doctor who requested the test after they've had time to review the test findings. Just because they don't tell you the test results on the day does not mean it's bad news. Now, once you've received your results, you'll then discuss next steps at your follow-up appointment if this is deemed necessary. In terms of side effects to an echo, well, they're pretty rare, but they might include mild chest discomfort, dizziness, or feeling sick during a stress echocardiogram. And in very, very rare circumstances, you can develop heart rhythm issues or allergic reactions to contrast agents that are used. Now, I hope this brief video has been informative, and for more detailed information on echocardiograms, please see the description box of this video where there are lots of extra useful resources.